If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It is free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You are now listening to Discover Your Potential with renowned radio talk show host and certified holistic practitioner, Cindy Gilman. So listen, participate, be inspired. Know that you can discover your potential. Here she is, Cindy Gilman. Welcome. Welcome on this wonderful autumn day. I love autumn. Autumn's my favorite time of year. It's almost as if the divine takes a big paintbrush and paints all of the leaves reds and oranges and yellow. It's just beautiful. So, if you're having a rough time, look outside, look at the leaves. It's so beautiful. Nature is wonderful. So, this is Cindy Gilman, and if you are a first-time listener, I welcome you, and I welcome our regular listeners. Uh, Many of you know that I am a spiritual grief counselor, medium, and... Um, a certified energy practitioner. And I know lots of you need healing because I can feel my hands getting red already. But uh, I do want to mention, if you're a first-time listener, this program is all about you. It's geared toward you. It's geared to help you to discover your potential. And the guests that I bring on have gone through their own, what I call, divine intervention and gone from one area, whether it's their work, their location, a difficult situation, and something moves them into where they should be so that they can develop to their full potential. Um... I do want to mention that if you miss part of this program or if you'd like somebody else to hear it, uh, it's made into a podcast and they can go to www.wdyp for Discovery Your Potential, talkradio.com. I also want to thank Doug and Don who were the entrepreneurs who founded and engineered this program. I don't know what I'd do without Don, with Doug. Uh, Doug is, he's he's my regular engineer and producer. Hi, Doug. Hi, everyone. Hi, Cindy. (laughs) Oh, you're so quiet today. Oh. Are you in a very peaceful mood? I am. I'm in a oh, great good. place. I'm sorry? I said I'm in a great place. Thank you. You sound it. Oh, yeah. You... Lots lots getting done. It's an opportunity. I love these sorts of opportunities. The craziness just means there are opportunities elsewhere. And mm-hmm. uh, we love it that way. So, And it's no different for us. When the, when the world is kind of uh, caged up, that's how I've felt all my life. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. used to it. Well, we're going to talk about, uh, in the last quarter of this program, we're going to talk about some of this week's events, uh, updates, and happenings. Um, but I want I always start this program by, and I know you're going to love our guest, because I love her. I know you're going to love her. Um I always try to start out with reading something inspirational, and I think it goes along 
with our guest, who is not only a journalist, but a survivor of thyroid cancer. Success begins with a single step. So that takes you as far as your determination and dedication want to go. And you will, my friend, if you remain strong and refuse to let any obstacles stand in your way of achieving your dreams. If you believe firmly in what you're doing and patiently keep taking those tiny steps, you'll get there and know the thrill of that that comes with meeting a challenge and winning. I believe it was Charles Swindoll who wrote the essay, Attitude, The Longer I Live, The More I Realize, The Impact of Attitude. Attitude is so important. We can't change the fact that people will act in a certain way We can't change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play on the one string we have, and that is our attitude. And so I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in in charge of our attitudes. And I think that really summarizes what my guest today has overcome and her journey. You ask, what is an artist? What is an artist? When I think of that word, so many images come to mind. So many different types of artists visual artists, writers, musical artists, and they all have a passion. They have a passion and a dream. An artist of any type should always follow their passion. Learn all you can to share it with the world and the lives of others you will touch. And through that, a great feeling of satisfaction will fill your soul. My guest today is an exceptional and talented woman. She's a Jersey girl. I don't mean wearing a Jersey. She's from New Jersey, grew up in New Jersey, And then when she married, moved to New England. She has three, well, she and her husband have three wonderful sons. Wonderful. I've met them. One, a promising baseball player. She's also been involved with a foundation which she will tell you about. Her journey is fascinating, extraordinary, and I welcome Lisa Purcell to Discover Your Potential. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Cindy. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, you're, a jur- you're a journalist and... And a thyroid cancer survivor. Yes, that's right. So let's talk about the journey. Well, the journey, like most things in life, was unexpected. I was 36 years old, and I'm very diligent about going to have my routine physical. So... I drove myself to my physician's office and had a normal physical, and then she spent some time touching my neck, Mm -hmm. 
At the time, I feel it's very important to let people know that my three sons were seven, six, and three years oh. of age. Mm-hmm. So to say I was quite busy would be an understatement. Uh, so she was touching my neck, wonderful physician in Rhode Island, and she asked me a question I'll never forget. Simple question, but so meaningful to me now, such an impact. She said, does this hurt while she was touching a lump on the left side of my neck Mm -hmm. that I was not aware was even there? It wasn't sticking out where it would be noticeable while you're, you know, combing your hair in the morning, brushing your teeth, putting on makeup. She was feeling all around my neck and and found this lump. And I looked at her and I said, what are you talking about? What lump? What does what hurt? So it was unexpected. I was very anxious and afraid. It led to an ultrasound, which led to a biopsy, which Mm -hmm. then led to, exactly one month later, another appointment with her where she sat down and told me another thing I didn't expect. She looked at me straight in the eye, calmly said, Lisa, the lump is malignant. Mm -hmm. You have thyroid cancer. And I went numb for about what felt like maybe just 30 seconds. And I remember saying to her, Doctor, so now what? And that's how the journey started. So can you move your head a bit so I can hear everything from your cell phone? Oh, sure. Good. Were you hearing all of that? Now I, can, I, I, now I can hear you. Okay. So did you miss all the other stuff? I'm sorry. No, I, I heard it, but it kept going in and out. Oh, okay. I'm um, sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah. So after she gave you that news... How did you react? I was in shock. I was afraid. I was very anxious. And then I suddenly said, what do we do now? And she said, I have to send you to a surgeon. So I met with the top uh, surgeon that treats thyroid patients in the state of Rhode Island Mm -hmm. and scheduled my surgery. And I was really, really scared scared because I had never had surgery before, major surgery where you need anesthesia. You know, I've right. had teeth extracted, things of that sort, but I've never had surgery and I'm 36 years old and I have these small children at home and I was so scared. Of course, I had family support around me, but I was really, really scared of the anesthesia and the surgery. Uh, thankfully, my surgeon was just phenomenal. He took my entire thyroid out, as well as several lymph nodes, and that was in 2008, November of 2008, and I've been a thyroid cancer survivor ever since, and I firmly believe that going for my routine physical, that my doctor saved my life. So for anyone out there listening, if you don't take your physical seriously, scheduling that yearly appointment, please schedule it because she saved my life. I would not have known that I had a malignant lump in my neck. Mm. So that, that was another... You know, that was like part two of the journey. So finding out the surgery, then having radioactive iodine radiation treatments three times. 
where I had to be in isolation for about a week. We're hearing a lot about people in isolation these days, but... Um, well, how often do they do the radioactive therapy? Well, they do it to thyroid cancer patients right after their surgery, within mm-hmm. three months of their surgery. And I've never had to have it again, thank God. She uh, had one, one radi- uh, radioactive treatment? I had three, actually. Three? Three in the first year. So the surgery was in 2008, and throughout 2009, I had three rounds of radioactive iodine radiation. Mm. And fortunately, I didn't get sick at all. I didn't lose any of my hair. Those are some of the side effects that some people encounter, but I was very lucky. And to this day, I see my endocrinologist four times a year. I'm on medication, synthroid for the rest of my life, uh, because I no longer have a thyroid. So the medication does what the thyroid is supposed to do. It's a little gland in your neck that is in the shape of a butterfly for people that don't know what it is, but it's so important. It controls your mood, your metabolism. Right. It, it's critical. It really is. And I was 36 and so busy raising three boys that I had no idea why I was so tired. Excessive fatigue is a major symptom for anyone who has uh, an overactive thyroid, which is what I had. You had an overactive thyroid? Yeah, hypothyroidism. As opposed Hypothyroid to is underactive. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well, thank God for you, Cindy. I'm getting all confused. That's I'm okay. Um, so had you put on me. weight or had any other symptoms of oh, hypothyroid? Oh, I'm so glad you said that because I had excessive fatigue. I can't hear you. I had excessive fatigue, mm-hmm. but I did I did put on some weight, but I thought it was because I popped out three boys in a matter of five years. So I just thought it was baby weight. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, exactly. And I would try to exercise if I could find the time in between running after three little rascals. But <laughs> <laughs> And now they're you know, grown rascals. Yes, now they're very much grown, thank God, rascals. Um, God bless them, great boys. But I was tired all the time, and I just thought it was because I had three little kids. Again, another reason why I want everyone out there to know it's so important to go for a routine physical, because you may think you're tired just because you work too many hours, or you may think you're tired because of so much stress in your life. And yes, that's, that's true. But I was so tired thinking it was raising my three sons, but it was Mm. really the fact that I had thyroid cancer. I had this horrible cancer growing Mm. inside of me. Mm. So uh, how did you get through the journey of this? Well, I, I must say that my family was there for me and very supportive. My husband was my rock. My kids didn't know what was going on, so we just kept telling them, Mommy's going to be okay. There's just, you know, a little problem in her neck that the doctor's going to take out. Uh, my parents were a wreck, uh, but I, I had support from my family and friends. But I must tell you, I turned to music as a form of therapy. You mentioned in the beginning of your show that I'm from New Jersey, and yes, I'm a stereotypical Jersey girl that loves the storytelling and the music of Bruce Springsteen. Ah, and you're a Bruce Springsteen fan. A huge Bruce Springsteen <laughs> fan. <laughs> Since the age of seven, seen him 
like other Springsteen fans say, oh, I lost count how many times in concert. I'm but sorry? I, I lost count how many times in concert I saw him. Uh, but I will say this. I turned to his music, and listening to his music to calm me down, it really was a form of therapy. You know, so many people find different ways to calm down and get through something. But music is so powerful. Do you have a and favorite I, Springsteen song? Well, my favorite Springsteen song is Thunder Road. However, that's not the song that I clinged on to, as I would like to say, during my diagnosis. The song that really resonated with me is called Waiting on a Sunny Day. And mm. it's on his album called The Rising. So the name of the song is Waiting on a Sunny Day, and there's a specific lyric in that song that mm -hmm. I identified with. And what and was that? The lyric is, Hard times, baby, they come to us all, just as the ticking of the clock on the wall. Wow, so I'm like even getting chills with saying those lyrics, and it's not because I'm a diehard Springsteen fan, but I would just listen to that song, Waiting on a Sunny Day, over and over, leading up to my surgery, after my diagnosis, mm. because it was as if my vocal hero, you know, my favorite rock star, was only singing that song to me. At that particular moment, I felt as if Bruce Springsteen was saying, Lisa, Hard times come to everyone. Just like time is going to pass by whether you want it to or not. And you're waiting for that sunny day. And I listened to the song, and the song gave me strength and hope because it made me realize everybody goes through things. It's called life, and you're going to get through this. Right. And the music... The well, music really helped me calm down. Uh, of course, I listen to other musicians as well, but I really identified with those lyrics. And then less than two years later, I had no idea that identifying with those lyrics would lead to so many different opportunities in my life. Uh, in the career aspect and category of my life. So going through the diagnosis and, and recovering and listening to the music opened up an entire door of opportunities because I became so creative and those lyrics made me think of things I wanted to do. So it was sort of as if I was evolving. I was safe again. I was healthy. The cancer was out of me. I was under great care, I was aware of thyroid cancer. I would tell all of my friends, please go to the doctor, please have your thyroid checked. I had a whole different attitude. I knew how important it was to take care of yourself. But then listening to music would help me calm down and focus. And I realized I wanted to do something because that music helped me so much. So do you think that was like divine intervention for you to move into something that was relating to music? I do think it was. Uh, do I think 100%? No. But I do think it was a sign from above. It was someone sending me a message. You need to do something. There's mm -hmm. a reason why you wanted to do, uh, there's a reason why you wanted to listen to that song over and over. And there's a reason why you identified with those specific lyrics. So, so was this before you got into journalism? Oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, I went to school in New York City, NYU, journalism major, um, and so my first job was back in 1992, mm -hmm. and this was all happening uh, right after the surgery. So the end of 2008, 
this is 2009. And I was very busy, obviously, with the kids. But what I decided to do, when I had some time, I will tell you, it took me until 2012. But the idea, the, the inspiration happened in 2009. Of course, you know, I had to have my priorities in check. I had to, you know, make sure the boys were fine, make sure my health was fine. And I didn't give up. I came up with this idea back in 2009, like, wow, I'm going to start a blog. And it's going to have every Springsteen song that I feel like writing about. (laughs) And I'm not going to be a music critic because I'm not a music critic. But I am going to find lyrics in each song that I want to to catalog, obviously, as you know, is just probably over at this point, 400 songs, maybe. I can't even keep track. But I decided that I would find Springsteen songs, pick out specific lyrics, and write a story. Some of them were fictionalized, but most of them were real stories, so much so that I even interviewed people that were also Springsteen fans, and then they shared their story about how music helped them get through something. For example, my friend Debbie, her son served in the military and went to Afghanistan, and she said if not for Bruce's music, she and her husband wouldn't have been able to get through their son Jordan doing... um, you know, a tour of duty in the Middle East. So what so, music did she listen to? She listened to Springsteen as well. Uh-huh. So I launched this blog in 2012, and it's all because I was inspired after having thyroid cancer diagnosis. So you just don't know, like, when, when you're given bad news, you just don't know where it's going to lead you. You don't know what's going to happen. And you have to be, um, you know, my husband always says the phrase, you know, well, you can't change things. What am I going to do about it? It is what it is. So, so yeah, in a way, he was right. Uh, I got the diagnosis. I, I had to deal with it. I had no other choice. But you have when to I move the ready, phone. When I was ready, Thank I, you. I, you know, I... Um, I decided to launch the blog, and it was fantastic. And it led to so many other opportunities that I never, ever would have thought possible. Uh, I can, if you want me to, I can share that. But, you know, I I just... Did that lead you to that foundation that you're involved with? It, It did. It eventually did. But there, there was a process to how um, I evolved after getting the diagnosis career-wise. So I had the diagnosis. Music helped me. Springsteen music helped me. I started a blog, which led to being selected to be in a documentary about Springsteen fans, which led to being uh, a special guest host on Sirius Radio, he has his own channel, E Street Radio. So I was still doing journalism-related uh, things, which made me feel so great because I I was busy as a mom, but I felt like, wow, this is incredible. I'm being creative again. And this all happened because I turned to music after being diagnosed with thyroid cancer. And then it just, it just kept like evolving into even more amazing things. After, so by 2015, I was the guest on E Street Radio, and then by 2016, I launched my own television show for Ryland PBS about how music helps people and can get people through tough times. What was the name of your TV show? The show was called Life and Lyrics. And what was what was the premise of the program? The the premise was uh, I wanted people to tell me what song they identify with when they went through something, either something great in their life 
or something very difficult in their life. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for two years. And if someone were to say to me, this is why I love the name of your show, Discover Your Potential. Thank you. I I just love it because if someone were to say to me in 2008, when I was busy, you know, at home, taking a break from working, that in 2016, I would be hosting and producing my own television show for Rhode Island PBS. I would have looked at them and said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> that, uh. that, you're, you're crazy. That, that, that'll never happen. Uh, I, I will never be able to host and produce my own show because... You know, I wasn't in that mode. I wasn't thinking. Of course, that that was a dream come true, and it it did. It was a dream that I fulfilled. But if someone really said to me in 2008, I kid you not, like, you're going to have a show someday because of this whole entire experience, I would have doubted them. I really would have been, unfortunately, I would have been cynical, and I would have said, you don't know what you're talking about. That's never going to happen. So... People really need to be open-minded. What you said in the beginning of your show about attitude. Yes. Attitude is, oh, my, I had to learn the hard way. Because, of course, I can be cynical, and I'm cynical still to this day oftentimes. And I recognize it, and I don't like it. But attitude is a little thing that makes such a big difference. And your mindset and believing in yourself and not giving up and being resilient and being defiant. And when you believe in something, not to give up, because believe me, for every step forward, I took about 10 steps back during the whole process of getting back into the business. And that that happens when we're going through a shift like that. Right. It, It certainly does. And then it led me to the most incredible thing, which is, the Rock and Roll Forever Foundation that I uh, believe in and support, it uh, was created by Stevie Van Zandt, and everyone listening can make fun of me, because, of course, he's a member of the East Street Band. move the phone again? Yeah, I'm sorry. He's a member of the East Street Band. Stevie Van Zandt is also in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm sorry? He starts, he's, a, he's, a, he's a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Who is Stephen Van Zandt, he's a member uh-huh. of the Street Band and a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he started the Rock and Roll Forever Foundation. And the idea behind the foundation is they have a curriculum called Teach Rock, and you can look it up, teachrock.org, and it's free to every school in the United States that wants to use it. Free lesson plans, all with national regulations. They've passed everything, Common Core, every guide, guideline. And, and what's it called again? TeachRock.org. Steve Rock. Teach, TeachRock.org. TeachRock.org. Yes, that's where you can find all of the lesson plans for free for, for any teacher that's out there. And, and, and he put that is, together. Yes, he put that together with curators at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, with educators, with people down in Washington, D.C. He really did it the right way. and He sounds uh, like a multi-talented person. He's incredibly talented. You know, people know him as a member of the E Street Band, as I mentioned, and as a rock and roll, uh, a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They also know him as an actor who was on The Sopranos, also know him from a Netflix series called Lillehammer, but Stevie Van Zandt truly believes that rock and roll changes people, that rock and roll can help educate kids. So he started this foundation and offers these free curriculums to middle school through high school age children. I pitched it to several schools in Rhode Island. Now I'm happy to say that some of the schools are actually teaching it. It's part of their curriculum. And oh, so wow. Uh, and what a way amazing. to get get kids to right. enjoy learning and education. Right. So I did something really uh, crazy, and I, I pushed boundaries. I wanted to test and challenge myself. I volunteered at an inner-city high school in Providence, Rhode Island, and I taught a few lessons. 
to high school students, and I used the lesson plan, and I convinced these kids who did not believe in themselves, who thought they couldn't write, who thought they could care less about history, that when we talked about civil rights and the timing of the 1960s and what was going on in the United States and the girl bands and the doo-wop songs and how there was such a profound effect on people growing up in the 60s, the, the kind of music that was going on and why some of it was rebellious. Well, there was a war going on that people were against. And suddenly you had these inner city kids who wanted to know about the Vietnam War. They didn't really know much about it. They could care less. Then you suddenly had kids when I put lyrics on a whiteboard and I said, okay, this is a lyric from the Rolling Stones. Maybe some of you don't even know who the Rolling Stones are. (laughs) But I don't want you to tell me um, about the Rolling Stones. I want you to look at these two lines and I want you to tell me a story about yourself. So that's what the Rock and Roll Forever Foundation tries to do. It tries to get kids to learn English, writing, history lessons, through music, which goes back to my whole entire story and how I evolved. Because if that for that song that I listened to over and over and over again and those specific lyrics, I would have never thought of starting a blog, interviewing people, getting into a documentary about Springsteen fans, being a guest on a radio show, starting a TV show, getting back into the TV business when I thought, no way. So then again, that's why I love the name of your show, Discover Your Potential. I had no, I was discovering my potential at the old age of in my 40s, you know. Um, so it was like I had a renaissance and a rebirth and a, and, and a new love for writing. And then I wanted to share that love and get kids who normally wouldn't want to learn anything or not motivated, wouldn't even want to go to school. This is what these kids told me, that they didn't want to go to school. And I got them to listen to music and to want to know about the girl group and the Rolling Stones and everything that was going on during the Civil Rights Movement and the Beatles. And uh, then we even talked, we did a lesson on the 80s and we talked about live aid and and what kind of effect it had on the entire world and and Mm. helping those starving in Ethiopia, like these kids finally were opened up to real events that happened. And thanks to music. So CD Van Zandt is right. Rock and roll is powerful. And it helped me through my thyroid diagnosis. And it, it triggered and inspired me to get back in the game, as I like to say, to do more writing, more Right. Doug, do we have a call around the line? No, you don't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lisa. I thought we oh, had. Oh no, 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 no. Um, I, so I just, I just uh, want everybody to know that. Yeah, hard times they come to us all, just like That's that lyric. Right. But your mindset and your attitude. And what you do with the cards that you're dealt, uh, you never know because you can really make a difference in somebody's life. And I'm not, I'm not patting myself on the back or tooting my own horn. I, because I really do believe in the foundation. And I found out about the foundation, of course, by going to a Springsteen concert. But, Mm -hmm. and I didn't know the foundation even existed. I didn't know he started it. I didn't know he did all of this work and had really educated are you doing, professionals. Are you doing any writing now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, so I try to write at least three or four times a week. And I, I love the word evolve because I think everybody should embrace that word. I think... It has to do with potential, and I think that people need to know that you can do different things with your life, take chances, because during this journey that we call life, I believe we all evolve 
and we take a certain path and right. we have to take chances. And so I now am so motivated and I write all the time. I finished the show, producing the show after two and a half years. Right. And what type of writing are you doing now? Right now I'm doing screenwriting because it's something that I had never done and I wanted to learn how to screenwrite and I wanted to try to write a television, two-hour television show or a two-hour show for Netflix or a two-hour movie for the big screen if we ever get back to movie theaters. And I do believe I'm being positive that we will we get to back to positive. the... Yes, we will get back to a new normal. We will not get back to normal. I'm aware so now, of that. Do you have a collaborator in in this writing adventure or Yes, I, I do have a collaborator that was willing to take me on because he knew that I had writing experience but only mm-hmm. journalism experience you know, news writing and it's been a fantastic um collaboration and we just started uh earlier this year before the COVID crisis. And who and, who's your collaborator? Uh, his name is John Land. He's uh, a published author. He's won yes, several... John, of- John was a guest on this program. I know he was. Yes, he was indeed. He did mention that to me. John's a fantastic individual, wonderful, wonderful mentor to me and collaborator. And he's teaching me how to uh, screenwrite because it's an entirely different tactic and, and approach Right. Uh, as opposed to writing a documentary or a TV show or breaking news, which was my training in the, from the past. But um, so John has published several books. Many. I think 21 or 22. Na- yeah, maybe even more. But he's won national and international book awards. Right. He uh, is the author of the Caitlin Strong series. But John was willing to take me on, and he had never done that before. So that's the other thing. To discover your potential. Again, I met with him, and I did not think that he would agree to help me out and be my mentor. Hmm. Because he's busy writing books. He has his own life. And again, so this screenplay, or one of them, you've done a few? Yes. Uh we are trying to polish up a fourth, but do you have a particular, a particular uh, star you have in mind to play <laughs> one of the characters? Well, of course, I, you know. Again, may I ask who? Yeah, of course. Yeah, your listeners can tease me, but I one of the scripts I specifically told John that the key, one of the key roles I had in mind, I was writing it thinking Stevie Van Zant would play one of the key roles because uh-huh. I <laughs> so all Who is the, connected the founder of the foundation and right. Who, all right so if anybody out there knows Stevie Van Dam they need to get in touch with Lisa <laughs> <laughs> yes they do so we're polishing up scripts and and one of them it was my idea cuz i just we came up with this. I can't say much. I'm not at liberty to. I but know. we came up with this great idea, and um, it, it um, really gives a wonderful lesson and uh, message. And there's the, one of the main roles I just kept seeing C.V. Van Zant as the actor playing this role, and no one else. So who knows? It may not happen, but. Maybe my dream will come true because what I'm trying to get at is just like I asked John Land, will you please help me? You've never done this before with any other writer. Mm -hmm. And he agreed. I'm going to try to go after getting Stevie Van Vant to at least read the screenplay. I I have to share something with you. Yes. You have a grandmother who's passed over. Yes. Yes, oh, both, both my first of all, she, most recently, she's yeah. speaking Italian, but <laughs> she just nodded her head. Yes, Aww. we can get him. Oh, I love that. I'm going to cry. I love that. Thank you, Cindy. I, yes, so, he, I um... sometimes put my intuitive foot in my mouth, but <laughs> I get the sense that she, from the other side, from above, is kind of... Dri- not driving the force, but she's she's kind of steering the st- 
steering the ship. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. There's no doubt in my mind because I will tell you that she passed on in 2017. However, uh, I she's still with me. She Yes, she is. She was an incredible woman that only spoke Italian, so you're right there. Okay? She's definitely not speaking English. <laughs> She only knew how to say bad words. She speaks words with an, it, an unusual dialect. Yes, uh, Neapolitan, which is very uh, difficult to understand. Uh, only, <laughs> well, like most of my family says, only Neapolitans understand each other. It's, it's a whole different language. Uh, but Nona... She's holding a big her. tray of food. Oh, because she cooked all the time and worked in a pizzeria and always wanted to feed people. And there was never enough food on the table. I grew up so Italian where there was just never, you know, you can't make enough food. I love food. it. You can't. I love it, too. It was amazing. She left me all of her recipes, which is another gift that she left me. She, she was an incredible woman, and I think of her every day, and I know she's watching over me. And I know um, that if she can pull any strings, ha, 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 music reference. Um, she is laughing, <laughs> and she just showed me several strings. <laughs> you know, I believe that all of gets, us, all of us, are connected through, with one one big string. That all people are connected. Oh, I, I I firmly believe that, and uh, whether they're here, whether they've transitioned to the other side. We're mm-hmm. all connected. Most definitely. And it's important, I feel, to talk to those that you are close to that have passed on and gone to the other side because that's also where I get some strength as well. I think of wonderful times with people in my family that have have left us. And mm-hmm. I recently lost my godfather, my Uncle Charlie, and I'm he just so always sorry. made me laugh. Thank you. He just... He, he just was so, he was, you know, he was the clown of the family, I'd like to say. He, he just had that comedic way about him. Uh, you'd ask him, where are you going, Uncle Charlie? And he'd look at you and say, I'm going to Chicago. Where are you going? <laughs> you are going just 10 minutes you away. You shared with me that your father-in-law, mm-hmm. who is how old? He will be 73 next month in November. And he is a survivor of the COVID virus. Uh, yes, he is. He yeah. went through so, a journey of his own. Wow, boy, did he. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not doing this intentionally. Uh, it just brings my mind to a whole different way of thinking because my father-in-law is a walking miracle. He unfortunately got the virus in March, was on a ventilator Mm. for nearly six weeks. Everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. He had to be on dialysis for his kidneys. He actually had, there was cardiac arrest. They brought him back. Mm. He, uh, had a collapsed lung. He had to have a tracheotomy. This virus is for real. So right. if right. anyone is even doubting, doubting. It, um, it's real. He came up to Rhode Island. He spends his time half in Florida, half in Rhode Island. He came up to Rhode Island. He had an important meeting. And um, we don't know how he got it, but he got it. And... Uh, you know, the same symptoms everyone hears about, the hacking cough, the chills, mm-hmm. the fever. Uh, and to be on a vent for that long, and, and now to see him show up at my son, my youngest son's baseball games. Okay, he's walking with a cane, but who cares? Mm-hmm. The man is alive, and he's watching his grandson play baseball. Hope and healing. Yeah. Lisa, yeah. thank you so much for sharing thank this time you. with us. Cindy, and, thank uh, you so much for having me. It was such an honor, and I'm so sorry that I um, the phone connection, but I must admit to you, I am standing outside of a baseball stadium in Connecticut. 
Right. Son, Have a great day. rest of the day, and thank you. You too. Thank okay. you, Cindy. Your show is the best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Doug? Cindy Gilman is a certified holistic and Reiki and energy practitioner, as well as a spiritual medium. As a spiritual medium and empath, she conducts individual personal consults either by phone or in her office. All sessions are professional and confidential. For a phone consultation or in-office appointment, go to www.cindygilman.com or call 401-885-4115. And so, what a wonderful guest. Let me remind you, um, you know, I wanted to talk about what was going on in the last few weeks initially. Uh, when I was thinking about what to say this week, I wanted to talk about the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was such an inspiration, an incredible woman. And I just found out that someone who I had met and interviewed a number of years ago when I was on a regular AM station, Helen Reddy, uh, also passed on, and I I got to meet with her, talk with her, interviewed her, and she was very sympathetic to holistic work and extrasensory perception. But I want to take just a few minutes, because this has been a very difficult time. It's affected everybody in some way. I know in the past few programs, I've asked each of you to please, if you have some extra money, when you go shopping, get an extra bag of non-perishable food, bring it to a food bank or a food pantry. There are people who are truly hurting. The other thing is let's take a moment to send out healing throughout the world, healing Our president, who is hospitalized, who caught the virus, let's send out healing. And to all politics aside, let us send him healing and hope. And let's hope that all of you who have either lost a loved one or a loved one has passed from this horrific virus, or those of you who are suffering with the virus, I'm sending out healing as we speak. It's been it's been an unusual time. We are definitely, definitely in that shift that everyone has been talking about for decades, for centuries. And it may be difficult, but if we have hope, if we have courage, if we're smart, if we wear our, if we wear our bandanas or our masks, if we keep things clean, wash our hands, do what we need to do for ourselves and for our fellow men and women and children. And no matter what people say, it's very important that you play by the rules. Listen to the scientists. Make sure you wear a mask. Make sure you wash your hands and things that come into your home. And make sure that you think about people who are going through such a difficult time. Bring some food to a food bank or a food pantry. It's very important. I thank you all. I thank you all for listening Okay, we're sending out healing now as we speak. For those of you who are in need of healing, this energy is sent out to you. If you missed a part of this program, please go to www.wdyptalkradio.com. If you need a personal phone session, go to Cindy. It's Cindy Gilman, that's G-I-L-M-A-N, dot com. 
and uh, Doug. Yes. Thank you for today. Thank oh. you for being a wonderful person you are. Thank you, Cindy. My pleasure. Thank you for being such a beautiful spirit. Thank you. Thank you. I want everybody to have a safe, hopeful, and well weeks ahead. I'll be talking to you soon. May you all be blessed. Bye-bye for now. Yeah.